Ryan. <laughs> we made it. 150 episodes. Kyle. Oh my god, it's incredible. I we don't have any special, but just want to hear before we got into the episode. Thank you all for joining yes. us for 150 episodes. It's been a fun ride. Can't wait till 200. We'll do something Ooh. special for the round numbers. I guess this is a re- point. Is we're lazy. Didn't do anything <laughs> for 150, but. We are doing a movie that lots of people yes. have requested, so we'll get to that in just a second. a bad movie fan favorite. Hello, and welcome back to the 150th episode of Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad, the show where we watch terrible movies. I'll tell you if you should tune your host, Mr. Brian Shilligo, the other host on this 150th time we've done this actually we've done it more than that but well actually only one more time than that right we have one lost episode yes a double down review that didn't the, the, yeah <laughs> the Denver the way today. day um but a second speaking double of double down it's it, back it's looking it is back we just put it back up uh the other day so if you've been well the other at this point it'll have been a couple of weeks but uh, the Double Down Review is back up, so if you want to go look for that, mm-hmm. check it out. But not right now. We're going to do this movie we, first. No talking about Neil Breen's ball sack. Not, not today. Nope. I mean, other than what you just did. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the extent of Neil Breen's ball sack. Instead, we have a different crazy guy in a black tank top. It's 1992's? Threes. Threes. Get even. Or Champagne and Bullets. Or Road to Revenge. <laughs> so many names for this movie. Drinking champagne and loving you to the break of dawn. Oh. Oh. Not knowing the sound of bullets will soon be strong. Champagne and Bullets. Oh. Originally, so, this was Champagne and Bullets. That was I looked the original this up. title? Okay. And uh, came out, uh, or no, it didn't come out. It didn't get a release, but it, it was supposed to be Champagne and Bullets. Then it got reworked and became Road to Revenge, mm-hmm. and they cut all the nudity from it for that version. Well, that's just boring. <laughs> and then a third cut came out that is called Get Even, all one word. Um, and then eventually, and that was the one that was actually released, was mm-hmm. Get Even on VHS in 1993. And then uh, a re-release of all the versions has happened on Blu-ray. Um, but the only one that is HD is the original cut, Champagne and Bullets, which is the one we watched. So the version we watched is Champagne oh, and got, Bullets. We got the full everything? The full. And we know, you can tell that because um, the one we watched was 99 minutes long. Yes. And that's how long Champagne and Bullets is. The other ones were all shorter than that. Also, in the credits, it says Champagne and Bullets. So I, I, I also couldn't tell... With the uh, the fact that every song had to be done to completion, and we had to get a lot of sex scenes from this guy. Starting over, starting over. All the songs had to be done to completion, and so did John DeHart. Hey, <laughs> You're gonna watch that man come a lot in this movie. Actually, I don't think you ever see him come. If the answer is yes. I think if he did, he'd die. He's yeah. Like 90. He's, he's How like is he still alive, Kyle? I don't know. That's a that's a hard 50. Yeah. <laughs> in this yeah. movie. He is a hard 50. Uh, so famously, Red Letter Media did this. I've actually not seen that review. No, it's one I of their few either. episodes that I've not, of best of the worst that I've not seen. Um, but it works out because then we get to talk about it here and I don't get to get spoiled by what they've said about it. Um, I was less than two seconds in and I already loved the music for this movie. <laughs> Drinking champagne and loving you to the break of dawn. All music done by John DeHart. John DeHart and boy, it's all fucking terrible <laughs> yes it's all terrible and it gets worse as it goes oh you're on fire when i grab you by the hand your way steals moving with the rhythm of the band his god and we'll get to it but like the one the the main ones that you've seen are are one thing but the fucking acoustic duet songs are the worst yeah you fell to pain you walked through the rain and now you Oh 
most horrifying assault on your ears that you could now, possibly is that with imagine. The actual actress? I think it might be her, or okay. it's maybe it's some other woman. I don't know if it's actually her. What was her name? <coughs> Something Bryant, uh, right? Pamela Dean her. Bryant. Um, Playboy model. model. That's all we. Uh, oh, was she? That. Yeah. that makes sense. That, that, yeah. well, for this movie. <laughs> yes. I mean, for this movie, because there's a lot of fucking nudity. Yep. <laughs> Starting over, and you feel like you're going out. Like you're gonna. So playing our role of Neil Breen this evening is John DeHart, as I mentioned before. Uh, and the, the opening song, the credit, the, the lyrics, I cannot stress enough how incredible they are. Drinking champagne and loving you till dawn, not knowing the sound of bullets will soon be strong. Drinking champagne and loving you till the break of dawn. Not knowing the sound of bullets will soon be strong. What? Now that is some grade A lyricism. What? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let me tell you. Champagne and bullets, a dangerous bear. Champagne and bullets. So uh, we, we open up on John DeHart and these other two guys are like cops. And they're yes, breaking it. They got not... LAPD on the back of them, because nothing screams LAPD like a couple of a, 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 a fucking trailer in the woods. middle of the yes, woods, in yeah. the middle of the woods. Yeah. Oh, this is gonna be a good. Thing. I feel a hell of a lot better if we had a warrant. We get some dope. We'll get a warrant. By the way, he's also a lawyer in downtown LA. <laughs> Who's a John DeHart. John DeHart's a lawyer, yes. yes. He's a lawyer in L.A.? I'm pretty sure. I didn't sure. know that. Yeah, I saw he was a lawyer, which we'll get to that later. But, <laughs> um, yeah, he is a lawyer, which I thought was wild. But things escalate very quickly. They're doing, like, a drug bust or whatever, and it's just a shootout immediately pops mm. off. You come out of there slowly with your damn hands behind your head. Now do it. Um, and Wings Hauser, who's our, our buddy, uh, who plays Huck Finney in this movie, is his name? Huck Finn. Huck yep. Fin yeah, Huck Finney is his, <laughs> yeah, but, it, Huck, yeah. We'll get to that. Yep. But um, he, he plays the buddy. He gets shot, like, immediately. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> he, gets, he, gets, he gets winged. Hey, hey um, in the stomach. I love the the guy though, Normad, the old police chief yes. guy. His played voice. by William Smith. Who's that? Who is a good, bad, or bad, bad alum from the Rollerblade Seven? Oh my he god! He played the Pharaoh, really? the guy in the wheelchair. Still doing credits. Forty-five yeah. minutes into the movie, that was a good stylistic choice. I broke my back. Still. Mask me. Mask me. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. I knew I was going to blow your mind with that one. <laughs> His voice, now that you mention it, does sound a little familiar. Hold your position, Finney! God damn it, Finney! I said hold your position! The only thing I have to live for now is... Slave girls. What a Going fucking kid. Yeah. Fucking like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's wild. Um, but he's a hilarious. I love him so much. You just made a big mistake. But he's like fine with one of the like wings gets shot and he's like, who gives a shit about him? We gotta go get him or whatever. And uh uh John DeHart gets very upset about this and knees Norma <laughs> what is what is his no Nor Norman? Normad. Normad. Normad and knees him in the balls. <laughs> yep. You know if that guy dies, we're doing the whole world a favor. <laughs> I, whatever. Basically, they have this argument, and and uh, they don't agree about the best course of action. John DeHart beats the shit out of Normad, and then we cut to a year later, mm. and they're in like a a, a trial about this. Yeah, or no, yeah, because not about Normad this, but... sets them up to be like these guys. Uh, they've been partaking a little bit in the drugs. He, he lies and says they've been yeah using drugs or whatever, um, and that uh, because he's mad that. They, he need him in the nuts. Yes. <laughs> He's still mad about that a year later. <laughs> you just made a big mistake. Uh, also, no mic on the judge in this scene. No. It's not a judge, but it's like the whoever. Audio is very messy throughout this whole film. Well, and then they uh, started slurring their speech. Did you report this conduct to me? I did not, sir. Most of it is ADR, I think, um, um, but yeah. As an expert in bad sound quality... <laughs> 
care for some uh, friendly advice? If you must. All right. You two were perfect before school was involved. You had no career plans, no worries. Now that you're out, both out in the real world, you're on totally different paths. She's out there going to college and expects you to be with her every step of the way. Well, it's not like I haven't been there for her. I would know. <laughs> for what? For this. What is that? What is that? It's a parking ticket. You want justice for this? For a single part? So then in this, we sit in this scene in the courtroom or whatever and watch Nor Normad read lines from his script. Right in front of him. Right in front of him. It's on the desk in front mm -hmm. of him for like 10 minutes. Well, they pulled into this, so. Uh... What I would call a pet pit. What I would call a panderer's vehicle. He just gives a recounting of this. Uh, this the pacing of this movie is abysmal. Oh, it's real bad. But it still somehow works. I was not bored for a second <laughs> of this film. <laughs> we'll get to that. But like, it is a real weird. We sit and watch this guy read from his script forever. You know, sir, it was very long and low. Had a myriad of fancy paint. Very, very shiny. The driver uh, got out of this vehicle and, uh, and approached Bodhi and Finney's car. He, at one point, he's like, well, then he talked to both of them, and they talked back to him. Well, Bodhi was in the driver's seat, and he started talking to him. But then he began talking to both of them, and they talked back with him. You believe this shit? And I'm like, why am I watching this? Why am I watching the world's most boring person recite this? This is the worst. Yeah, I recognize this suspect because I had busted him a couple of years earlier. I busted him on the corner dealing dope. Just say they did the drugs. Yeah, say they did drugs and move on. That scene should take two seconds. Mm -hmm. And it should be like, you know, it's it's it should, it should literally be like a thirty second scene where it's like a year later and he's like, I saw them doing drugs and then also like the, bullshit. And this then is it a ends. criminal trial and it seems like he's like testifying. It's not a. Why is he not up in the uh, you know testifying in the normal? It's not. So this place. isn't a trial. This is like an internal affairs like. Oh, okay. Thing I think because it's not a judge. It's like the head of like a cop. It's like another cop. Like yeah. It's like an internal affairs deal. It's not yeah, like usually an actual... they would have like I don't know because they're LAPD, so they would have like the Highway Patrol take care of that. I don't know. They do a lot of stuff. <laughs> I don't know, Kyle. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Um, but I love there's a uh, Huck has this great outburst at the end of this where he gets real mad and starts yelling, and the judge is like, "I'm not going to tolerate outbursts." And Huck goes, "Sit down." or I will have you removed from this hearing. You're not gonna tolerate outbursts? How about tolerating the goddamn justice system? How about tolerating the goddamn justice system? And it's like, <laughs> what does that even mean? That doesn't make any sense. Well, that doesn't, and the thing that's so stupid about that is like he should have just said that line there that makes sense is oh you're not going to tolerate outbursts how about how about tolerating the bullshit this guy's spewing that line at least makes sense mm -hmm. and like. No, nope. you're gonna tolerate nope. the justice system. But like Wing Wing Hauser's character is, is supposed to be like kind of a nut job. Oh, he's crazy. Barkeep, I would like another drink, okay? But at this time, at this point in place, right? I'd like something with some class, okay? So give me a classy drink. Well, he gets more crazy as the movie goes on, yeah. and I legitimately, no kidding, could not tell if that was just <laughs> Wings Hauser being crazy or if he's playing a character who's supposed to be crazy. Because if it's him playing a character, Oscar. Whoa, what am I doing? Uh, uh, reciting the uh, noble, noble noises of Huckism, man. You know, I mean, it's built on, uh, built on this new religion I've developed about Huckleberry Finn. Give this man a fucking Wings. I'm not even joking. Wings Hauser in this movie, assuming he's not, they didn't just roll on a man having a mental <laughs> breakdown. If he's acting, he's incredible. You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there, man. I'm sitting there. I'm doing my thing, you know. And I'm thinking, all of a sudden, he gets me. It's Rick. This, this, he, this role. This, I, I, I thought he was I amazing. Say, I've, I've seen him in other stuff. 
Uh, this was definitely not. This is him acting. He is okay. A, I was blown away by how ridiculous he is and how much he commits to this mm. role. It is fantastic. <laughs> I had so much fun watching him. Fights. I told her something like this was going to happen. Wages of sin. So uh, they storm out. Uh, he beats up two of the cops as he's leaving the courtroom. Wings Hauser does because yeah. he's very upset. Add more to his sentence. Yeah, right. Come on. You want some of me? Come on, take it all. Get your ass out of the jail. Oh, take it easy. Take it easy. Um, but but then we cut forward again now, and they're no longer um, they're no longer cops. Cops. And they're they're like, not in prison or anything. Like no, that. I guess they just got kicked off the force. Basically, they oh, just got like whatever. what? Yeah, they got fought, released or whatever. So they're out shooting crossbows <laughs> in the yes. woods together, just hanging out. And Kyle John DeHart is a fashion icon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In this movie, every outfit this man is wears incredible. is incredible. In this scene, he is wearing a crushed, like, velvet <laughs> U.S. Olympics <laughs> tracksuit. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. And Wings Hauser is wearing this insane, like, multicolored vomit shirt with, like, very short <laughs> shorts. Everybody Everything. is dressed insane it's in this so movie, and I love it. crazy. It's uh, incredible. My, every... <laughs> And John DeHart al almost always has a cowboy hat on. Pretty much. Uh, a half, lot. Let's yes. say half and half. About and, half and half. He either has a cowboy hat or sunglasses. <laughs> yes. Or glasses. Like one of the two. Everything about his character. I mean, it's not, it's not even his character. It's, it's just, just him. him. I'm pretty sure this is just yes. John DeHart playing John DeHart. And I, we'll get to it here in a second with the... With the um, with the bar scene, yeah. but he is now a driver, basically. It mm -hmm. seems he's a like, limo driver, like a limo driver, and he's taking these high schoolers to prom or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> the scene is fucking wild. Yeah, I, we, the, like all these high schoolers are in the back seat and just tits out. I'm yep. like, what is happening? Yep. Oh, luckily, these high schoolers are played by like 35 year olds. Yes. Just, to, just to rest easy on that one. They're all like in their 40s playing high schoolers, but they they're all like being drunk assholes and they need to go to the bathroom, so they get out and John Dehart just leaves Let them there. Bye. And he says, Adios, Bella Lugosi, or Adiosi, Bella Lugosi. Adiosi, Bella Lugosi. Which is a fucking, fucking amazing line. line. It's so <laughs> ridiculous. Hey, you don't recognize me in my talk? Hey, you recognize this famous? <laughs> and then we cut to Huck, uh, to Finney, who is ironing. <laughs> His pants in his underwear and behind him on the couch. Is, what is this? It's like a cigar. It is. Indian, it's, right? it's it's like it's, yeah, it's like a it's like a, a Native American chieftain yes. guy who's just statue who's just sitting on it's, his couch. If you went to a, a cigar shop in the 50s, you know what <laughs> yeah. we're talking about. It's so weird. And he just has this thing just, all the he's time. Talk, he's talking to the, the yes. chief. See Sam, you see this? You see that? Greg and Nikki, man, are getting back together. I think Wingshauser's character is supposed to be legitimately like, crazy from like moment it. one. <laughs> and yeah, and he gets crazier and mm -hmm. crazier as the movie goes. You're late. How was the ride? Ah, it was crazy, kids. Rick? Nikki and Greg, man, they're getting back together. But then, so they're they're gonna go out that night. They're gonna go out and get some drinks, and they roll into this bar, and this is where we're introduced to Cindy. Uh, who's our main love interest and Cindy's sitting at the bar and I don't know if you noticed this but she's talking to her mom at the mm -hmm. bar and she they walk <laughs> Rick and uh, her Rick is John DeHart's character's name yes. um, and hit, Rick and Huck walk in and <laughs> Cindy's mom says <laughs> hey look who's here and the look on Cindy's face when she says that she's like oh fucking Christ <laughs> hey look who's here that you, Cindy? I gotta do this scene now. <laughs> yeah, right. she's like, oh, God, that's so it begins. <laughs> like, yep. this is yep. my life now. I have to interact with John DeHart for the next th three months of filming or whatever. Hey, look who's here. Hello. So they, they haven't seen each other in a while. Um, they broke up while he was a cop. They had dated at one point, and mm -hmm. they broke up because she was so worried about him all the time. 
And that that's what the actress says, but her performance says, I hoped you died every day. <laughs> you should have stuck around. I wish I could have. I worried about you so much. <laughs> she says I was so worried about you, but that is not what I nope, got from nope. watching. That. She's, she's slowly blinking towards <laughs> yeah, it's blinking, blinking Morse code, yeah. I worried about you so much. So they're kind of chit-chatting and catching back up, and then from off screen we hear somebody yell, Hey Rick! They're about to do your favorite song! Hey Rick! No. Get up off that leather-covered carpet of yours and get up here! We're gonna do your favorite song! Good idea, good thinking! Come on, go up to the sink. Yeah, come on, Rick. Come on, Mick, yeah, sing us a song. Sing. Well, please, come Rick. Me. Get up there, show me how it's done. And the band starts playing, and Rick, John DeHart, just walks up on stage and starts warbling the worst fucking so bad. country line dancing song. Well, it's me, just sliding all across the floor. Proving too much, you stomp and pull some more. That's when my eyes catch you and my heart. Oh, pretty baby, man, can you swing? <laughs> it's fucking incredible. I love it so much. The uh, and everything he sings is in the same tone. It does not change. A beat starts a moving as they push me from my chair. A finger started stamping, wanna run through your hair. Yes, yes, it's incredible. Um, come on, pretty baby, let's do the shimmy slide. Cause <laughs> everybody's doing the shimmy and the slide. The least charismatic man mm -hmm. that has ever existed. His performance, which just, by the way, that is only amplified by a scene uh, said later in the film, and I will bring it yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. But he just, when he, this performance, I've never seen somebody look less like they wanted to be performing. Oh, you're on fire when I grab you by the hand. Your waist is moving with the rhythm of the band. Yes. Then this it's man, like, dude, this is your movie. You wrote yourself doing this. Give it even an, uh, just a modicum of like energy. He's just like, come on, baby, do the shimmy slide. Come on, pretty baby, let's do the shimmy slide. I'm just gonna shake back and forth. It's yep. so fucking weird. <laughs> There is one way he there's also one of the lines in the song. He's the way he says hot. It's like hot. Oh pretty baby, you make it so hot. Oh pretty baby, you make it so hot. <laughs> it just like explodes out of his it's so weird. Hot. Meanwhile, uh some asshole with bleach tips and a bolo tie rolls up. These are the bad guys. She she she's getting like surrounded immediately by <laughs> these uh these uh let's just say uh Miscreants? Yeah, they're, they're bad. We don't know who they they're are yet. We will find out before guys. too long. At this point, they're just like kind of bad dudes who are like there to like give them a hard time. They actually are people that become mm. in characters that are important. I don't know what you're talking about. And then I love, I thought the song was over. And then John DeHart goes, oh, let's do it again. And then keeps singing. And I was like, oh, no. no. Let's do it again. Oh, yo. Like, you know what? Yes, let's do it again. I can see why let's this do this for the rest of the down. movie. Nah, let's do this for the rest of the movie. I want to watch him sing Shimmy Slide for the rest of my life on loop. It will never leave my head. I loved it so much. My eyes will open as you take me for a ride. Come on, pretty baby, let's do the Shimmy Slide. I will say in this scene, I don't know what Cindy's wearing, but it's fucking awesome. She's wearing like, she looks like she's a member of My Chemical Romance in the Black Parade. She's got mm. like a fucking marching band, like, <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's so weird. I love it though. Um, but then this bar just turns into a strip club. Yes, All what was this about? Well, apparently it's not something that normally happens because one of the patrons is very upset about it. This yes. woman gets on stage and just starts stripping. Stripping like, yes. In just out of nowhere. And one of the other All patrons right. is like, How disgusting. I can't believe this. And I love her friend is like, I was at your place last night or last Friday and it was fucked up in there. And I was like, what is? We should talk. This place looks like Sunday school compared to what I saw in your apartment Friday night. What? What? <laughs> what is going on? What? Also, that's a private 
place. This yeah, is like a, that's what she says. This, She's like, but this is a public or whatever. Yes. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And this is not an apartment. It's a public place. And I did not come here to get grossed out. But she's very mad about it, so she calls the cop. And then I love to they're having a chat, and Cindy's 90-year-old mom, mom walks comes over, out, it's like, yep. and it's like, hey, check that out. Yep. <laughs> Fun, huh? My great mom. <laughs> He's taking it all off. She says, fun, huh? And, and, and mother owns this place, right? Yeah, her yeah. mom runs the place. And she goes, fun, huh? And I was like, good for Cindy's mom. This 80-year-old out here oh just fucking God. looking at titties and loving life. Put on a good show. <laughs> Woo! They, they try to, like, kidnap Cindy, these mm. bad guys. Uh, and Rick... <laughs> Beat some up. Yes. <laughs> Throws one of them through a pinball machine. Yeah. It's great. He's just like old man punches all of them. And I love you get like, uh, after he beats Boom. up the first guy, Boom. you get like the, 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 the uh, standing ovation dot wave <laughs> like yes. comes in from. You got like, ah! oh, every punch is like a, is a heavy sound effects punch. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Fuck out of the way. <laughs> Yeah, and you just get everybody in the background applauding him. It's like, you fucking narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Huck gets arrested because he gets a little too crazy mm -hmm. and they got to go bail him out of prison. Yeah. And we get a 10 <laughs> minute so scene ridiculous. of the minutia of bail because bonding. Because he's a fucking lawyer and he's got to explain this shit. I believe somebody's got a little something for me. A deed, maybe? Got the deed for you right here. Yes, wonderful. Let me get some numbers off of this. Fill in the blanks and we'll get, uh, get down to it. Let's see. And, uh... Wow, it's so boring. I didn't like this guy. I did like this guy who played the bail bonds. He's, yeah, he's fine. He's good. Everything's taken care of. They'll be releasing him shortly. You tell Huck I said to stay away from those bad women, all right? You folks take care of yourselves. But I love as they're leaving, they get Huck out, and he's like, I just want to let you know, the accommodations here suck. You know, I just want to say one thing, like, uh, from a personal observation, that the accommodations here, they, uh, I don't know, they just suck. <laughs> and then John <laughs> Hook, and this is one of the deals I'm talking about, in the most, like, <laughs> the self-awareness of this fucking line is incredible. Or lack of. Yeah, lack of, he yeah. He puts a quarter down and says, Hey, here's a quarter. Buy yourself a personality. Fucking roasted! But also, have you seen yourself, John DeHart? Oh, you're on fire when I grab you by the hand. Mirror in your face. <laughs> He's the most boring man that has ever existed. <laughs> You must have left town for a while. Your mother says she hadn't seen you in months. I had to get out. And but he just I love it. Oh. Buy yourself a personality. That <laughs> shit cracked me up so bad. I was like, <sighs> oh, him trying to be funny. Hey, here's a quarter. Buy yourself a personality. And you can tell when they leave, that really stung the cop. Like the cop, like as they're walking away, he's like, oh. Buy yourself a personality. <laughs> oh, let's go home. Get away, it's been over. If I not have a person, if I was the cop in this situation, I would be like, I would be so shattered because I would say. My God, if this if guy this is guy. telling me this, what am I missing in my own life? What have I missed yeah. in my own life that has brought me to this point? <laughs> That'd be great. He just walks away. He's the cop just gets his gun out. It's just like, oh, God. <laughs> it's existential crisis. Like, yeah. He just shatters, like, him, shatters like, him with this dumb little like <laughs> middle school insult. Buy yourself a personality. <laughs> so stupid. Buy yourself a personality. <laughs> oh, let's go home. Get away, it's been over. Oh, God. Then we cut, and him and Cindy are getting lunch or dinner at a restaurant. What is this restaurant, Kyle? I don't know. They're drinking champagne. Yes. There's a sombrero on the wall, mm -hmm. and then I'm pretty sure the waiter has some some sort of accent that I could not place. Good to see you. <laughs> I haven't seen you for so long. And I could not tell if they're supposed uh, to be at a French restaurant. It's classy as shit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I could not tell what I think kind of it's restaurant. A, it's, it's supposed to be a high-end pride Mexican restaurant. Uh, get, maybe that's what it is supposed to be, but it was very funny to me because uh, I was like, you don't normally drink champagne with Mexican food, <laughs> but, in my uh, experience, but... And to the best food in town. Thank you. Good remember 
a wonderful taste and a total lunch. Oh, yeah. how could we forget? I remember falling asleep in the 503 station. <laughs> <laughs> and this, I, this, this is this was clearly all improvised because then we just get to watch John DeHart tell terrible jokes for like five minutes. Oh my minutes. god! Yep. So I got a physician joke for you. It's a very attractive young lady. Goes to the doctor for a checkup. The doc doctor says, hey, you got a disrobe. She takes her clothes off and she says, doctor, where should I put them? He says, right over here on top of mine. <laughs> He's like, you want to hear a joke, waiter? And the waiter's like, I, I, uh, you're paying me, so sure, I guess. Why not? <laughs> and then he gets done with the joke and they're like, oh, that's great. That was a good one. You want to hear another joke? And I'm like, oh my God. That one was good. <laughs> it's quite a profession. I got another one for you, Ben. Another Dr. Joe. Pick on Dr. Day. No, we don't want to hear another joke. This guy with a duck on his head, he goes to the doctor. The doctor says, can I help you? The duck says, yeah, get this guy off my ass. <laughs> <laughs> no. And then a singing photographer shows up. Hello, my name is Tamra. And the reason I've got this camera. Is that a thing that used to be a I thing? I don't know. What was that? She shows up and she's like, I'm going to take your picture. I mean, given the time, in 93, Polaroid cameras were right. still a thing. But it's, and I guess it is like that, like kind of her like way to stand out is to be the singing photographer. Mm -hmm. But she shows up just singing. I was like, I would be like, <laughs> go away. Leave me alone. I don't like this. Is if you really love her. Sounds good. Shoot this. There's a whole movie has this, but so many times anything that's that's like background music and not a John DeHart original that he's singing is the most chaotic, nightmare inducing. He's got to yeah, make his sound good by comparison. Yeah. Like, so this conversation is just a, it's a, it's like a guitar plucking the whole time that is just, it's like <laughs> it, it, my anxiety was like slowly elevating through the whole. It's, and there are some scenes that are even worse than this. It looks just like us. And they're just kind of back together now. They, they, yep. They've recouped, kindled their love, and then they go hang out on a swing. And this is where we get the flash. God, they're, they're, okay. So this is right at thirty minutes. I'll give I'll give him credit on uh, the the old standard of at the first at the end of the first act is where you introduce the conflict problem. And its case is satanic rituals by the sh the, the judge. Well, yes, he becomes a judge. So Normad. Yes. And I love that it's just kind of like revealed to us like without a big like moment um but she's telling this flashback about she while he was gone she joined a fucking yeah satanic i fell cult. in with a bad crowd we were also a satanic cult that sacrificed children they're members of a cult of devil worshipers the crowd i got into they they started getting involved in a coven i just kind of fell into it i Devil worshippers, uh, they were members of a coven. And then the last meeting that she went to, they sacrificed a baby. And we get this footage of them at this meeting, and the camera just swings around and shows the guy leading the meeting, and it's Normad. And you're yeah. like, oh, yeah. oh, okay. We love you, Satan. Throughout the ages, Satan has guided us. Because, like, the way it was described, it's like every bad 80s, 90s PSA thing where it's like... Right, it's you know, satanic fell panic. In, fell in with a bad... Cr well, like, even more so, it's like oh, fell in with a bad crowd. Right. You know, we were having fun, we were doing drugs. It was good at first, but then it got out of hand. Anyways, they're also a, a <laughs> satanic ritual. Yeah. I started attending these meetings. The last meeting I went to... And I love the what? way you know their satanic ritual cult is that one, there's skulls everywhere. Two, their altar has six 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 on the front yeah, of it. And then the back of his robe is an upside down cross. And then also they just constantly say, "Hail Satan!" Hail, like we love Satan. Yeah, we love Satan. <laughs> we love you, Satan. Just over and over again. Go with Satan. We love you, Satan. Satan lives. We love you, Satan. I love it. It's amazing. But here's the thing that would make sense with this scene. You would shoot it in a way where we never see the face of the guy leading mm -hmm. it, right? He would be shadow like he'd have his hood up and it would be shadowy. Yeah. And then like we see them do all this stuff and then later you reveal, "Oh my god, it's Normad. He's leading the cult." But when you just show us that immediately, mm -hmm. there's no 
like you can't go anywhere. You can with even that. use like the glasses that he has. Those are pretty noticeable. Like those are pretty identifiable. Yeah. To a certain degree. If you if you wanted to reveal that. Yeah. I just it's me the way you do this is you just have this you set this up the cult thing. And then again, at, at the end of the second act, you reveal, oh my God, it was Normad mm-hmm. who was the guy who sacrificed the baby. But just yeah. showing us that immediately kills all the tent. You're just like, oh, okay, it's him. Yeah. Well, like, here's the thing. Like I said, this works in the first act because right at 30 minutes of this 90 minute film, it, it brings in that conflict. Now, the second act for this movie expands for the next 50 minutes. Yeah. And it's just mostly sex scenes. Yes. Walk towards the future and out of the past. And Something I've got to know right now. Because this guy does not know how to write a fucking narrative. No, not even, not even a little bit. Um, so, uh, Normad, they keep repeating how much they love Satan for like 20 goddamn minutes. The omnipotence of our leader, Satan. We, we love you, Satan. Uh, and then Cindy's like, all of a sudden is like, no, stop. She just gets out of line and is like, no. Yep. Yep. No, stop. You can't go through with this. So, and they're like, fuck you. And they tie her up. And then they bring the baby out. And he starts stabbing the baby. <laughs> yes. And I don't know if you noticed. You can see he goes to stab it and completely misses. This is the time of the... Like there's a shot where he stabs yeah. the the altar and just nowhere uh. near the. It's so bad. Oh, I love it. I'm sorry. Uh, but then it cuts back. They're on the swing still, and she's like, "I'm sorry." The thing you're leaving unsaid there is that you're sorry you fell in with a baby murdering cult. Yes. <laughs> she says, I'm sorry. Like, see, like, she forgot to make him dinner or something. Yep. And it's like, no, okay. So anyways, we practice infanticide. Yeah. And then, uh, well, now I'm here. Yeah. And she says, she even says they sacrificed a human baby and Rick just has no reaction. He's just <laughs> like. They sacrificed a human baby. Yeah, that sounds about so right. We can have sex now, right? <laughs> yeah, he's like, "Can we fuck her now?" Like, I don't care. I don't like. It's just, yeah. They sacrificed a human baby. I tried to stop it, but I couldn't. So I just left Hollywood the next day. I didn't know what to do. Uh, no, it's actually because then what he needs to do is quote Shakespeare poorly oh for ten God. goddamn minutes, he Kyle. To re- he has to recite Hamlet. To be or not to be. That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take up arms against the sea of trouble. My favorite thing about this is he starts reciting it, clearly forgets it halfway through. So they cut in a separate shot for like two seconds and then cut back to him finishing the quote. So he started doing his big Hamlet monologue and then was like, oh, fuck. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. And thus, conscience does make cowards of us all. And they're like, oh, we'll just slap, we'll band-aid it, we'll cover it. And then they're like, oh, keep going. It's fucking terrible. And thus, the native hue of resolution is sicklied or by the pale cast of thought. Uh, then, then it's the sex scene. They're in front of the fireplace, our first of many. They're in front of the fireplace and the music. This is what I was talking about. We get an acoustic ballad. You feel like you're gonna, feel like you're gonna. But they're both just so out of tune. No, it's every yeah. every ballad in this movie is so out of tune yep. and so terrible. It makes it. The scenes are already not sexy because John DeHart is there, looking like John DeHart with a much younger woman, and it's horrifying. Yes. Instead Ugh. of, uh, but then you add this music over top of it, and it becomes the most horrifying thing you could possibly witness. Starting over, and you feel like you're gonna. Feel 
feel like you're gonna. I would rather watch that baby get stabbed eight times <laughs> than watch the uh, fucking clearly sex Clearly, John Hart just watches like some sexy movie scenes and was like, let's just recreate that yeah. for a minute. All right, I'm just gonna rub ice all over your yep. nipples for 10 minutes. Yep. Starting over, then you feel like you're gone. Uh. And then Huck is very wasted. We cut away from mm -hmm. this. My great friend, Huck. We just. Leave me hanging out there again. Yeah. Okay, well, you know I can't afford it. And Rick tells him, hey, I'm moving in with Cindy. And Hook yep. is very upset about yep. this. <laughs> he gets so Lost mad. Lost his roommate. Roomie, gone. You got no goddamn class, okay? My buddy here can speak Hamlet. All right? You want to hear it or not? Uh, nobody wants to hear Hamlet's speech. And Shakespeare wrote it. You know what? I really don't give a fuck who wrote it, okay? You got it? He also, too, before he gets mad at Rick, he starts like yell to yelling at the other guys at the bar. He's like, my buddy knows Hamlet. He can you, speak Shakespeare, You want to hear him do Hamlet? And they're like, maybe later. <laughs> and I was like, nope. My, God. my buddy here knows how to talk about Hamlet. He knows the lines. You want to hear it or not? Not right now. Maybe later. But it's a very good drunk scene. I will say mm -hmm. that Wing Hauser's portrayal of being drunk here is either very good or he was very drunk. I'm yes. not sure well, which. Both are optional. Both could be, yeah, uh, both could be true. Would you like a bullet? A little class, huh? Give my friend here a bottle of class too. What, a bullet. But I, I love at the end of the scene, and again, I don't know if he's improvising this because his dialogue is so much better and funnier than everybody else's. I, I think half it is improvised and he's just that good. That's what I was saying. I was like, I think he's just actually kind of entertaining. And mm. like, so when Rick's improvise or John DeHart's improvising, it's boring rather, and terrible. Maybe it's not necessarily that he's good at it. It's that everybody else is, is, so, is bad so bad in comparison. Yeah, because he has this <laughs> moment again. Um, he's like, all right, I got a list. One. Never touch somebody again, like my wife. I don't know. He's like uh, something. And then he's like, two? I forgot two. Number one, you never say Alex again. Number two, I've forgotten. Number three, uh, number three, I'd like to kill you. I'm really drunk. <laughs> it's, like, it's really funny. It's actually very oh funny. Oh my God. Number two, number two, I just remember. But Rick's like fuck you and just leaves. Um, yep. And then we cut <laughs> to, to to Wings Hauser standing in his empty apartment with a gun, <laughs> shooting, shooting holes bills in shoot. his bills. So good. Electricity, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. It's so incredible. I don't know whose idea that was, but A plus. Yes. So good. Credit card. Landlord, landlord. And then he gets in a big argument with his wife or ex-wife or whatever, mm. like a big drunken argument. And this Alamani, whole thing. so divorce. Is that yeah, yeah. They're divorce? already they're already split up, but they're I, arguing I, over. I'm unfamiliar. They're arguing over money or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And it for some reason this is all shot handheld when the rest of the movie is not. Yes. And I don't know if that was like a creative decision of like this chaotic scene of. <laughs> You cannot be possibly giving John DeHart any credit in that field. Maybe Wings Hauser was the only one there, and he was like... He was directing it? Yeah, he was yeah. directing it and was like, all right, we're going to shoot this handheld to really give this the chaotic feel that the scene needs. The lady's got a dress. Yeah, the lady's got a dress, huh? The lady's got a fucking dress for who? You dressed for my friends, my cop buddies, and everybody you are fucking on the side. When I'm drunk off my ass yelling at my ex-wife or whatever. Um, but at the end of the scene, his ex-wife just rips her shirt off and is like, remember these? You remember these? You don't know how to treat them either. God. <laughs> you never treated these titties right either. It's so weird. It's such a she weird She calls scene. the cops and says that she's been assaulted. assaulted. And he's like, no. And they're like, you've been drinking. And he's like, fuck you. I'll get drunk if I want. <laughs> And they arrest him and they I'm, bring I'm him I'm sorry, in. I thought it was America. <laughs> I thought it was America. <laughs> I'm sorry. Have you been drinking, sir? Oh, great. That's great. Let's blame it on alcohol. Okay, yeah. I've had a couple of beers, man. I'm sitting on the couch. Yes, I had a couple of beers. Oh, my God. And this, this is one of the scenes where the music is legitimately, has to be intentionally 
trying to make you lose your mind. It's just straight. And when I say random, I don't mean like kind of random. I mean, purely <laughs> random drum sounds and like Casio keyboard sound effects. So if you didn't do anything to her, you can explain that to the judge. You get your day in court. And right now you're coming to us. Yeah, listen, there used to be a cop. Just, it's chaos. It's, Jam session. It's pure chaos. I was like, what is happening here? Oh my God. Uh, Huck's ex-wife is now in with Normad. She yes. like goes and shows up at Normad's place and mm -hmm. she's like, I was just talking to Huck and he knows something or I don't she she's she's trying to tell Normad something. And Normad yeah. is just an asshole and so he spanks her. And boy yes. do we spend a lot of time Wee watching that boy. spanking. <laughs> Wonder if now. John DeHart's into spanking or not. Spoilers, I don't wonder. I know because I watched this fucking movie. I mean, yes, <laughs> but also I need to know how much influence did William Smith have over this scene as well? Oh, maybe William <laughs> Smith is into spanking. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's very upsetting. It's, it's, very it's, upsetting. it's like every Neil Breen movie where yes. you're like, oh, my God, that. Oh, this is, this is just, this is just, yep, this is very sad. <laughs> um,. This court is now in session. <laughs> then we get a court scene, and I don't remember exactly what this court scene is even for. Um, I think it's oh, it's for oh, it's, Huck. Yeah, it's for, for, for his, his drunken disorder. And the or judge happens to be Normad. Yes. And I fucking th from this moment on, every and even before this, but every outfit again that John DeHart wears in this movie is so <laughs> fucking good. In this scene, in a courtroom, this motherfucker has these giant glasses yes. on. He's wearing shiny black leather pants, a, a fucking plaid shirt, and a blazer. He looks in his oh, fashion God. has aged so well. Like he looks like a weird hipster from LA yeah. now. Like he looks <laughs> like his wardrobe in this movie you could put on like some Instagram influencer <laughs> now, and it would look perfectly normal like he, he's not homeless he's just ahead of his time he's he is super ahead of his time like i was like john dehart looks like where everybody gets their fashion tips from this like he he looks incredible i love it so much i call it derelict <laughs> yeah it's bullshit norman can't hear this case what are we gonna do about it listen you polyester puppet Oh, it's amazing. I love him so much. Listen, you polyester puppet. Just the, the pure gall to wear shiny ass tight black leather pants to a courtroom? <laughs> yeah. That is fucking bullshit. It's, it's, it's like my cousin Vinny where he wears like the carnival outfit. Yeah, it's fucking amazing. Oh my God. Um, so they end up locking uh, Huck up in jail. Oh my God. And he, he's got a brilliant idea. He's got a brilliant idea. We got a janitor coming by. He's He's got his... Racking up his little mop thing, and what's he got in there, Brian? A bottle of Clorox. Hell yeah! We're gonna down that shit. He just drinks a bottle of bleach, and it's like, oh, oh god. Hey, hey, what are you doing, man? Hey, guards, guards! <laughs> the next scene we have with him. Kind of fine, just he's drink a little hospital, bit of water. Fine, yeah. Tummy ache. Yeah, he's got a tummy ache, he's fine. I came by to see if there's anything you'd like to talk about. The medic said you seem very distressed. Wow. <laughs> and then my favorite thing, he's super sad, he's talking to a nun or whatever, and she's like talking about religion and stuff. Um, but he's just super miserable. And my favorite thing is <laughs> John DeHart and Cindy walk in to visit him. <laughs> John DeHart's line to him <laughs> makes it so weird. He walks in. This is his best friend in the world, right? Who was in prison and tried to kill himself. <laughs> he walks in and goes, I heard you did that bleach thing. <laughs> I heard you did that bleach thing. What? You did that bleach thing. I did, yeah. <laughs> And he goes, yeah, I did. <laughs> and then they just move on. I did, yeah. Hey, well, on another level, we petitioned the court. We got rid of Norman. Good. They're like, 
like that. It's such a weird conversation. Hey, you know that you know that suicidal thing that we talked about? You did it, right? I heard you did that bleach thing. Yeah. Yep. Not nice. All right. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? It's like it's like it's, it's like jackass where they're yeah, it really is. Another. It really is. He because he's like laughing about it. It's like, wh- what is happening? It's so <laughs> fucking strange. I loved it. Hi, I, hi, I'm Huck Finley, and this is the drink leader. God, and then so then we cut from there to Cindy has to go pick up like her clothes from her parents' house. Her, yes, and we meet her parents who are like super religious, and they're very mad that she is. Um, living a life of sin in LA or whatever like that. Why is he an ex-policeman? He get thrown off for drugs? Satan worshiping? Come on, Bill. You're not going to get anywhere with her. She'll never change. You're a disgrace. And I love, again, John DeHart is dripped out like a motherfucker <laughs> yeah. in this scene. His sunglasses are so it's fucking so baller. Ridiculous. And he's got this striped shirt with the mm. black lid. He looks amazing. Yes. I, I cannot get over how well John DeHart's fashion has aged. From J- check the costume uh, designer for this. I mean, I guarantee you it's John. It's John DeHart. He's yeah. just wearing his clothes. But I cannot get over how his clothes went from... He thought they were cool in the 90s and he looked like a clown to, well, you still look like a clown. And then all of a sudden in the year 2020, it's like, wait a second. This guy had it all figured out 30 years ahead of time. <laughs> it's amazing. It's so he looks so crazy. I love it. Oh, God. But she's picking up her stuff from her parents and they're really shitty and being assholes. I love uh, they're, they're turned to John DeHart and they're like, what are you? Another drug contaminated devil worshiper from Hollywood? Who are you? Another drug-contaminated devil worshiper from Hollywood? I'm a friend of Cindy's, and that ought to be good enough for you. What? And then she's like, well, if you, if I wasn't raised the way you raised me, trying to program me into a biblical robot. If it wasn't for the way you tried to program me and turn me into a biblical robot, then maybe I wouldn't have rebelled. The way you brought me up, it's lucky that I'm not totally antisocial, living in a cave, far away from life's so-called evil. The dialogue, again, feels like it was written by an alien. It's like, what am I watching? What (laughs) What is happening? Oh, God. Uh, But basically, she yells at him, that's why mom left, you fucking asshole. (laughs) And then they storm out of there. Um, Their relationship will not be mended. My mother was wasting away from living with you and all your uncompromising ideas. That's why she left you. Nope. Um... But who cares? This is the only scene with them. It does not matter. Or no, they do show up at yeah, the funeral. Show up at the end, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which Spoilers, we will get, Brian. We will get to that. That twist so is amazing. Um, is this the, the bathtub sex scene next? Is not it? Uh, yes, but as they're, I just got to talk about this little moment. As they're leaving that scene, we watch John DeHart struggle to get his Kia Soul into gear for like 30 <laughs> seconds. It's rolling backwards, and he's yeah, like, yeah, his fuck, manual training. He's trying, trying to fuck, skip to the fuck, second. Yeah, <laughs> and then he finally like grinds the gear, oh, and, it's like, grr, grr, and he's like, all right, I'm out of here. It's like, is that the only take? You want to uh, do one take? And I mean, to be fair, I don't think I could drive stick very well. No, I can't then, drive a stick. It's just very funny watching him being like, fuck, 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 as the car rolls backwards, and that's the take you use in your mm-hmm. movie. Uh, then we get another terrible acoustic song as they stare at the sunset for 20 minutes. When the world feels like it's giving in on us. And then the bubble bath, Kyle. Oh it's God. time for the, the bubble bath. <laughs> He pulls a fully clothed, well, not fully clothed, she's just wearing like a shirt or whatever, pulls her in her shirt into the bubble bath with him, and then it goes into slow-mo. They shoot actual slow-mo. It's not mm-hmm. like terrible slowed down, you know, normal uh, speed footage. Um, and this scene is 20 minutes long. Yes, it's it. this is, uh, how are we going to meet that 90 minutes, Brian? Uh, 10-minute sexy bubble bath scene? There we go. Nailed where it. I sing the same song twice, twice. in a row. Yes. <laughs> it fades out and then it comes oh back my in. God. With you, something I've got to know right now. And also, this is 100% some shitty, like, themed motel room suite because it has, like, 
you could tell because nobody if, if you have this kind of maybe in the the early 90s or late 80s people had these kind of bathrooms in their home but this looks like they went to a, a motel in like pensacola florida because mm-hmm. it's got like seashells everywhere and there's like a fish net on the I wall do know, i love how brian knows this specifically so yeah i've been to pensacola and went to a <laughs> shitty motel so i know i know what it looks like they're all the same they all have like fish netting everywhere and seashells everywhere mm-hmm. um but they just make out in this bubble bath forever in slow motion terrible song playing the whole time um and i was like come on can we move on i'll be with you when you're feeling blue and then they start fucking they were like making out and then she climbs on top i was like oh no you're in a bubble bath oh it's gonna sting so bad don't do that no oh god something i've got to know right now 65% uh, of this movie's runtime is bubble bath sex scene. Yes, absolutely. Um, and also, and th- he's being ridden by this gorgeous woman. He looks so bored. The entire, yeah. he's just like, yep. I guess this is my life now. Well, his heart's so fucked up. <laughs> Nothing, no, nothing's working down there. <laughs> he's, he can't do anything. He's got, he's like, if I move an inch, I will literally have a it's heart like, it's like one of the, It's like one of those flailing and inflatable tube guys. That, like, <laughs> oh, uh, God. <laughs> he's got every <laughs> <cardboard>. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> <laughs> if the answer is yes. <sighs> and then at the end of the scene, he turns to her and says, Why don't I take you and get married this weekend? And she responds by saying, I do. Why don't I take you and get you married this weekend? <laughs> I do. I do. Which is not the. That sounds he, not he quite. didn't say he. Okay, <laughs> those, right. those two lines don't go together. All right. Um, then we cut directly from that to Huck standing sh- drunkenly in a pool. Yes, where I can't tell if this is supposed to be his own mind being crazy. With we have the uh, the Native American thing guy. In the yeah, who's like again. yeah. But we have these two women who are on topless float up on pool floats. Yeah, and, I and they all have orange hair. They've all spray painted their hair orange. Yeah, I can't tell if this is real or this is him being crazy. Again. I don't know, but he's like, I started a religion, the Huck Finn religion. You know, I mean, it's built on uh, built on this new religion I've developed about Huckleberry Finn. No, seriously, this is a great theology. I mean, take off your clothes, leave your clothes on, get in the pool, man. Look, this is what's happening. And he's like, and, and we're all slaves. Yeah, we're man. all slaves, man. If you think about it, and he's like, I actually, again, this is one of those scenes where where Wings Hauser fucking goes for it, and I kind of love it. <laughs> yes. He's just standing there drunkenly, like fucking monologuing in this pool. I'm talking. I'm talk. I'm talking. Huckleberry Finn. Really? Well, uh, just came over to tell you, Cindy and I are getting married, and it's kind of incredible. Um, Anyways, we're getting married on Sunday. Yeah. Sunday, that's a good day. That's a good day. <laughs> we're getting married Sunday. Be there. Mary. Sunday's a good day. Sunday's very good. Yeah. Uh, um, and then we cut to John DeHart's wedding. My God. He is. Why would you dress like this for your wedding? We are here today to join this lovely couple in holy matrimony. They love each other very much. He's wearing like a Tommy Hilfiger, like... I don't even know what it is. I, he looks insane. Yes, the, he looks like not somebody who's playing golf, but somebody watching somebody <laughs> playing golf. That is exactly it in the 90s. Yes, yes it is exactly it. He, he is off in the corner as, as as I I don't know, Jack Nichols is, is sinking a putt and he's going, God damn that golden bear. This, I will say this is the only time where his outfit is not on point for his wedding. I was expecting something much more over the top, and it's not there. But wh- who who is making up for that is Wings motherfucking Hauser <laughs> yes. in the background in an orange suit oh, with a green shirt underneath, looking like the goddamn Joker or looking, something. He's looking and everywhere. He's, he's, like, like, he's like having a fucking panic attack in the middle of his wedding. He's like, you just see him in the background like... I, Cynthia Westport, take Rick Bodie to be my lawfully wedded husband. I, Cynthia Westport, take you, Rick Bodie, to be my lawfully wedded husband. He, like, wanders off in one point. It's like, what is... Wing Houser is the best part of this yes, movie. Yes, he's absolutely the best part of this movie. It's incredible. He's like a Will Ferrell character. It's, like, so <laughs> weird. I love it. But then, because it's they got married, now they have to have their honeymoon. 
So of course we have to have another sex scene, Kyle. <laughs> So we watch her strip for him for like 10 minutes as they sing another terrible fucking ballad. Don't stop caring for me. Don't stop caring for me. So uh, I got bored during all these sex scenes, so I started Googling John DeHart stuff. Because <laughs> I was like, I, just, I, can't, I, just, I can't watch this old man like kiss her neck for another 20 minutes. So during this sex scene, I started Googling, and this is where I found his Facebook page where John DeHart is apparently a lawyer and his Facebook page I love it's just it's it's just the same picture of him like eight times and then he just posts like old boomer memes that get like two likes oh god <laughs> that's all it is it's so <laughs> fucking funny and sad <laughs> oh god and you and then at the end of the sex scene, though, I did come back from my Google search just in time to watch Cindy stare into my soul. Yes, what, what was, was that? that about? What was that about? I couldn't go on. That was her oh, judging we us. We totally missed something during the, <laughs> during, during the wedding <laughs> scene. Oh, did we? I, 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 okay, you probably missed this. They're exchanging vows, right? Yeah. And so Cindy does her vow, and then on a beat, like it takes a beat, and then you hear cut. Take you, Rick Bodie. To be my lawfully wedded husband. Rick, repeat after me. Ah, ah. Oh, I missed that. This cut was mixed into it, but they don't—they didn't cut away from it, right? And nobody really stopped their action for the most part. So it's probably like the AD or something yeah. like that yelling "cut." Like I'm thinking there, I have an AD. <laughs> and then when, before we go into John's vows, it cuts to another angle. Rick, repeat after me. Ah. I, Rick Bodie, with this ring. Take Cynthia Westport to be my lawfully wedded wife. I, Rick Bodie. So they, they yelled cut, kept it up to that point, and then took a different angle oh my where God. he gave his. I missed that completely. That's so fucking... doesn't surprise me, though. Mm. Not at all. Because, um, yeah, some of the editing is, is real bad. Uh, but, yeah, she just stares right into my soul. And, again, I felt like that was her judging us as the audience, just mm -hmm. like... You, you enjoying Sa yourself, you fucking me. sickos, you save fucking me. weirdos watching this movie. <laughs> we cut after their sex scene. They're like hanging out in their bedroom and she's looking at pictures and she just stumbles across a picture of, of whatever his, uh, the guy, Normad or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's him. And she's like, oh, hey, look, that's the guy who's the leader of the satanic cult. What? And he's like, what? And that's literally his reaction. <laughs> he's the one who murdered the baby. What? Really? Uh, and then they got to get out of there, though, so they get in a sick motorcycle chase. Yep. And they're driving, and the car's chasing them. And Kyle, I've never seen a movie do a worse job illustrating what happened in a scene yep. than the end of this chase. They, uh, they're they just two shots. Of two. There's a shot of, of vehicles. Uh, only, like, two or three of them have both vehicles in the frame. The rest of them are just independent shots. Yeah. Uh, Cindy loses her helmet, and then it's just They drive just up over dust. a hill. They drive yep. up over a hill. And then we see the car, and it slows down, and, and they, they stop. And then we get a shot of dust. <laughs> And then we get a shot of the car and the guys are like, we got him. Yep, got him. We got her. And then we cut back and now she's laying on the side of the road bleeding from the head. Yep. What? I have what? no idea what transpired. We see nothing of what happened. We don't even see them. I went back at that multiple yes, times. See if I, I missed exact something. Exact same thing. I backed it up like three times. Like, am I stupid? Did I miss something? No, they just didn't film any of them. <laughs> they couldn't film the stunt, so yeah. they just skipped it. And we're like, eh, now they're dead on the side of the road. Um, so apparently Cindy's dead. Mm -hmm. He crawls over and, and sobs over her body. Um, and then we have the funeral. And uh, once again, Huck shows up just completely <laughs> yeah. half in the bag. He's got no off clue where ass. to go. <laughs> yeah, just standing there staring into space <laughs> during this funeral. Um, but the funeral ends, and he walks up. John DeHart walks up to her, her grave, and he goes, I'll get even for you, Cindy. I promise I'll get even. You know that was in the trailer if they ever I had I promise a I'll get even. <laughs> 
uh, line of the or name of the movie yep. or one movie. of the names yeah, of the movie. Exactly. <laughs> uh, there is a point where Huck uh, is trying to console him. He goes, uh, "Hey, buddy, uh, uh, maybe just stop by my place later, and we'll uh, do a thing." Yeah, so, but what he ends up doing is he shows up at, at John DeHart's place and brings him the Native American yes. statue as yes. a present. Yes. Also, he's dressed entirely like Huck Finn now. Yes. It's what the so fuck is crazy. going on? He's got, in the, this hat, he's got the hat. He's got the hat and great. the rolled up pants. He's dressed like Huck Finn. I'm like, what is happening in this fucking film? It's crazy. John Hart is putting some real power into this. Oh, he's this beating bag. the shit out of that yes. punching bag as, as much as his Ooh. old man arms can take. Um, but then we cut right from that to revenge time. He's stalking through the woods like goddamn John Rambo. Yeah, he's got a, a composite longbow. <laughs> composite bow, and I love he puts the arrow on it and it like he can't get. It's seated and yeah, like bounces around. <laughs> you don't want to do that take again so you look like you know what you're doing? No? Okay, great. Fantastic. He arrows a guy in the neck who falls off into a pool. It's and glorious. who very clearly jumps off. Like yeah. he, he like starts to fall and then jumps. <laughs> So he didn't land on the edge of the pool. Yeah. Oh God. Um, and meanwhile, a guy shows up to to get talk to the bad guy, uh, whatever his, uh, Normad. Yeah. Um, and it's a guy like a guy from like a Mexican cartel or yeah, something yeah. like that with his girlfriend, and, and Normad just kills both of they them. They got the good shit. Yeah, he just kills both of them. <laughs> John just is a crack shot and just kills a bunch of guys in the hallway. Yes, yeah, so we have to talk about this hallway scene really quick, though, because he's, there's this big hallway shootout, and they're shooting each other, but I swear to God, at one point, one of the bad guys comes out and shoots another bad guy. <laughs> Did you notice this? Because John's at the end of the hallway, and all the bad guys are in these, like, three doorways we see, and at yeah. one point... Somebody pops out of one of the doorways where a bad guy was aiming at another bad guy and shoots him. I think they kill each other. I think that I'll show. I All swear right. to, it's so weird. Um, it, that does it feel a little Scooby Doo ish where it's a, just a bunch of bad guys going in and out of doors. In and out of doorways. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. Um, but then they, he's able to get out of there or whatever. Um, he, oh, he gets captured. Mm. He gets captured, and they're like, take him outside and kill him. Uh, Normad's like, take him outside and murder him. And they take him outside to shoot him, and then Huck just appears yep. out of the woods and gets shot in the leg. Yep. He's like, do the tourniquet thing. <laughs> and he just leaves them there. Oh, okay. Do that tourniquet thing. I'll, I'll be back. Oh, shit. Cool. He's like, great. I'll, I, guess I'll, I guess I'll just get my belt out and tourniquet my leg. Um, and then Rick, this this is very clearly, they were like, oh my God, we have to wrap this movie yeah, up. Yeah, because it, it's all like chaos. I said, like, the second act of this movie takes like 50 minutes. Yeah, because so he wanted nine we sex to, scenes. So we have to condense the third act into like 10. 10, yeah. It's literally like the last 15 minutes of the movie is the entire third act. And it's just, none of it meshes, none of it makes chaos. sense. It's, it's just absolute chaos. chaos. God damn. Um, but he finally he gets back inside to confront Normad, and I love when he confronts him. He's holding the gun, and did you notice he's holding it like this? He has his what? middle finger on the trigger, <laughs> so and dumb. what I've never what? seen. What you killed the only woman I ever loved, and it's payback time. But uh, so Normad just immediately knocks the gun out of his hand with like a briefcase. He's just like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> and like knocks it out of his hand, uh, but then this fight lasts for like two seconds again. Yeah, like, we he gets wrap the this sacrificial up. knife, and John Hart's like, "There you go, right back." Stab you right it. in his chest with it. <laughs> and then as he's falling and slides down the thing, he starts dying. He has his delivery. I'll see you in hell, you son of a. <laughs> See you in hell, you son of a bitch. <laughs> he just dies. It's amazing. Yep. You son of a bitch. Not a problem. 
Uh, and then we cut to but the But we're not grave. done we're yet. not done yet. We get the greatest twist reveal the nun in the history of cinema. to visit John at the grave because yeah. he's the sad. Once again, John dripped out in his denim with American flag <laughs> pattern on it. <laughs> Looking incredible. Um, and the nun shows up and is like, God works in mysterious ways. Take me to the hospital. Rather than a long explanation, could you please give me a ride back to the hospital? And he's like, what? I'm visiting my dead wife's grave. And she's like, take me to the hospital. And he's like, okay, yeah, fine. Whatever. <laughs> well, I could, but uh, I'd like to spend a quiet moment with Cindy. Uh, maybe you could say a prayer. I will, and I know it's difficult. But please give me a ride back to the hospital first. And he takes her. <laughs> and she's just fine there. Oh, Rick. I begged them to tell you where it was. And that's what I was like. As soon as I saw like, that happen, I was like, oh, my God, she's going to be alive. What, what did you fucking bury? Yeah. I, well, nothing. Is that So he walks in and Cindy's just there. And as he arrives, she's like, oh, they couldn't tell you they knew i was being chased by this satanic cult so they in i woke up in the ambulance and they were like we're gonna pretend you're dead and have the funeral so that that way they don't come after you anymore and we couldn't tell you for reasons i guess okay and so she's just alive this is absolutely just like a, oh i want my love interest alive this yes. is such a weird rewrite also, i don't understand it's like yeah yeah i, w I went ahead and i uh, went on a killing spree I murdered like ten yeah. people. Yeah, thinking that they had murdered you. Yes, <laughs> but uh, that you, you were dead because of them. But you were not. So I just killed all those people for kind of no reason. Well, I mean they are a satanic murder cult, so whatever. Like yeah. who cares? But they they are like murdering babies and stuff. But it is a it's a very weird fucking ending. Insane. It's such a weird ending. I will say that I fucking love this movie. Yes, this is a good. It's match. great. Are match. you fucking kidding? Uh, this Winghauser is, is the best part Wings of this Houser, movie. I. Deserves an award for his performance <laughs> in this movie. I could. It was so good that I legitimately could not tell whether it was a performance or just a man having a mental breakdown, and that is impressive because I was like blown away by how ridiculous and incredible he is in this film. Um, every scene he steals that he's in, <laughs> yes. even ones where he's just in the background. Again, the fucking wedding scene. He's just in the background, You're looking like, around, like, huh? And I couldn't keep my eyes off him. <laughs> John DeHart is a horribly, horribly boring man. <laughs> yes, he is. Uh, who thinks he's a fucking rock star, and he is not. But if you need legal representation, <laughs> you can go to the DeHart Law Firm. There's no way that man's still practicing <laughs> no, law. He's, he's like dead. 90 years old. He, I think he's alive. <laughs> I think he's still alive. But I, I mean, do you think you think it's the mustache that's like it's like slowly it's it's his life force and it's slowly receding? Rece <laughs> like when he was born, it was like six feet long, <laughs> yeah. and it's and like slowly... once, once it goes away completely, yeah. then his life ends. <laughs> Yeah, it's like Benjamin Button disease. It's yeah. like going backwards. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Anyways, absolutely good, bad. Absolutely incredible. Um, thank you all for recommending that for so long yes. and then finally getting to it because awesome. it was a delight and a treat for our 150th episode. We got a bunch more in the tank. Don't, we're not stopping oh, no. anytime no. soon. We're not good. stopping. We're making it to at least 200 hey. and then I'm probably quitting. No stopping this train. <laughs> God. I'm just kidding. Brian's like, and bye. 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 I'm still, I'm still on the train as it's going off the cliff. <laughs> I jump out of the car and he just like calls up. Yeah. No, uh, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun and I'm glad we could make it another 50 episodes. Um, and if you want to keep it going, you can do us a giant favor by heading over to patreon.com slash GB or BB and supporting us there for a few bucks a month and mm -hmm. allows us to buy all that. We got new mic arms. Yes, these recently. are very sturdy. Because the old the ones old were ones. terrible and would fall and do stupid stuff all the time. And these ones these, are these much are fancy. nicer. They've got a guide for the wires. They've got a whole, oh, they're so much nicer than our previous ones. So uh, that kind of stuff is all because of people, viewers like you. <laughs> so thank you all so very much for supporting us. We appreciate it a lot. If you want to buy us, uh, support us in yes. a different way. You can do it in like Team a one-time thing. You got merch. We can get some merch. You can get a good, bad, or bad, bad shirt, a quantum physics shirt. We also have our face design shirts, a couple other mm -hmm. little designs. You can get not just shirts. There's all pillows, whatever. There's a, mugs, all kinds of stuff. Um, and it's all they're fairly reasonably priced, and we get a cut of all of it. So you can do that if you want to support us as well. I have a podcast called This Film Is It. We're talking about movies that are based on books. When this episode's out, the most recent episode will, I don't fucking know, because, again, we're too far out. What's up? Man in the High Castle? I don't know. What?
What? Why were you looking up at... Oh, I have no clue. I was just thinking of a movie or a show or something that was a book. We don't do shows, Kyle. We okay, do movies. movies. I can tell you. Hold on. It will have been... Ender's Game. Hey! There you go. I'm re I'm reading that right now, actually. So, uh, I, I knew that because I'm fucking reading them. I'm an idiot. So, uh, you kids have been doing a great job at training for this mission, uh, but it's over. You actually already killed all the aliens. Spoiler. I, I just started it, Kyle. I didn't know. How do you not know the every... fucking ending of Ender's Game? I don't know the plot of Ender's Game. Oh I, I knew. God. I, I kind of knew that there's like a. It's like a pretend. It's like a facsimile war kind of. I I knew a little bit. You didn't spoil too much for okay. me. I, I kind of knew <laughs> roughly what's going on. Anyways, uh, yeah, Ender's Game. I think when this is out, uh, Twitch.tv slash whatever. Um, do you be or be Brian? Do you or be Kyle? Uh, you can check out our cool stuff we do. Like oh, I do Minecraft stuff. Brian makes pizza. I haven't done anything in a long time, but I will eventually at <laughs> one point again in the future. Maybe, maybe, at some we, point. maybe we can do a little. Yeah, maybe we'll do thing. a little something together. Um, uh, and my last thing that I was going to mention was uh, the PO box because I've been meaning to. We need to record a new one. Um, yes. But if you want to send us stuff, you uh, the PO box that's on the screen right now. You can send us there, and we upload that, or we open all that stuff on camera and then upload it, and you can uh, you can you can check it, it out. So yeah, uh, and send us movies. We have. Hundreds. Oh man, We're, it's the collection is amassing. Which yeah, we do try to do one of those at least every couple episodes. Mm -hmm. So that's it for the 150th episode. We got four minutes left, just in time. Until next time, keep watching movies, especially Get Even or Champagne and Bullets or, or Road to Revenge. Road to Revenge. Whatever John Hart. <laughs> wow.